Now let us look at question number two on centrifugal compressors. The question says a centrifugal compressor running at 12,000 rpm delivers 600 meter cube per minute of free air. The air is compressed from one bar and 27 degrees Celsius to a pressure ratio of 4 with an isentropic efficiency of 85%. So this is not an isentropic compression. The blades are radial to the impeller but of course outlet and flow velocity of 60 meter per second may be assumed constant throughout. So Vf is constant. The outer radius of the impeller is twice the inner one and the slip factor is 0.9. There are four things to find out. The first one is the final temperature of air. Second is the power input to the compressor. Third is the impeller diode at inlet and outlet and the last is the width of impeller at inlet. So let us start by writing down the data given to us. So we are given the RPM which is 12,000. Okay. Then we have the volume flow rate which is 600 meter cube per minute which is 10 meter cube per second. Okay. The air is compressed from 1 bar. So P1 is 1 bar. How many kPa this is? This is 100 kPa. Okay, temperature is 300 Kelvin. Okay, to a pressure ratio of 4. So P2 is 4 bar, which is 400 kPa. Okay, the isentropic efficiency is 0.85. Okay. The flow velocity is constant, so let us say Vf1 is equal to Vf2 which is equal to 60. Okay, and the outer radius is twice the inner radius, so you have R2 is equal to 2R1. So this is given to you and we also have the slip factor 5 which is 0.9. Right, so this is given to us. Let us find first of all find out the isentropic temperature of the air after compression that would be T2 and that is T1 into P2 by P1 upon gamma minus 1 by gamma. So this would become 300 into 4.4 upon 1.4. So this would give you a T2 of around 445.79 Kelvin. So this is T2. Now we are given the isentropic efficiency, isn't it? So if you apply this formula, 0.85 is equal to the ideal temperature rise that is T2 minus T1. So 445.79 minus T1 which is 300 divided by the actual delta T which is T2 dash minus T1. So from this equation I can easily find out T2 dash that would be the final temperature of air after compression given that your isentropic efficiency is 85%. So T2 dash this is approximately 472. So 471 0.52 Kelvin. So this is what your final temperature of the air is. So we are done with this particular part of the question. Second is the power input to the compressor. To find out the power input we need to find out the mass flow rate from the volume flow rate that we have as this 10 meter per second. So the mass flow rate would be P1 into V dot upon R into T1. So P1 is 100 kPa, this is 10 meter cube per second, R is 0.287 for air and T1 is 300. So this would give you M dot and M dot is 11.61 kg per second. Okay, 
now to find out power power input it's a simple thing which is m dot cp t2 dash minus t1 and this would give you kilojoule per second or kilowatts so m dot is how much 11.61 cp for air is this T2 dash is this much 471.52 minus T1 300. Okay, so this will give you a power input of around 2000 watts or kilowatts. This would be 2001.3 kilowatts. So this much amount of power has to be given in order to get this kind of performance from your centrifugal compressor. Now the second part of the question is also done. Now let's come to the third part, which is the impeller dia at inlet and outlet. Let us say the impeller dia at inlet is D1 and the outlet is D2. We have the relation between the radii of the inlet and outlet, so the same expression would apply on to the diameter values. Let's start with the outermost, that is the D21. So we know that the work done per kg is small w is equal to phi into u2 square. So this is something that you know. And this w has to be found out from this particular part of this equation. So that would give you kilojoule per kg. Okay, so this w is basically Cp into delta T. So w will be equal to around 172.37 into 10 to the power 3 joules per kg. Now why joules? Because this has to be in meters per second, not kilometers per second. Okay, so you put this value over here and find out U2. So U2 is equal to under root W upon 5, which is equal to uh, around 400 so if you write this down, so you'll get 437.63 meters per second. So this is the value of U2, that is the tangential velocity at the outlet. Why did we find this out? Because when once we have U2, U2 is nothing but, uh, you know, uh, omega R2, isn't it? So you can find D2 from there. So U2 is equal to pi into D2 into n upon 60 meters per second. So from here, you know the value of u2, you know the value of n, so d2 can be easily found out. So d2 from here would come out to be approximately 69.65 centimeters. You have to convert from meters to centimeters because it will be 0 0.0069, not a very good value to handle. So just convert it into centimeters. Now, from D1, you can easily find out D2 because D1 is half of D2. So D1 is half of this. Okay, so you'll get approximately 34.825 again centimeters. So you're done with the third part also impeller dia at inlet and outlet last part which is the width of impeller at inlet okay so you have a specific formula for this remember that which is b is equal to volume flow rate v dot upon pi into d1 into vf1 because we need an inlet so the subscript is 1 right so this would give you the value of width as 15.23 centimeters. So this finishes the last part of the question. So this is how you will get a question on a centrifugal compressor which is full of data. Write down the data and then proceed with whatever that you have learned so far. So it's a very simple question. The only thing is it is calculation intensive. So I hope you understood question number two. Now let's move on to question number three in the next video.